So I got asked a really good question. It was about the implementation of NPP, or which is very similar to DECA Durable, and into the safe use model, and if you could implement NPP into it. So NPP is a NOR 19, so it's a progestin-based uh, PED. So the, the question was around dosing and how you would implement it and if I would implement it. Now, NPP, I am not as much of a fan of as DECA. They're very similar. Everyone responds a little bit differently. Some people do really well with NPP. Some people do really well with DECA. Some people don't do well with both, and I'm about to go into that in a second here. NPP is a natural progesterone, whereas DECA is a synthetic form. Now, they're almost identical in their, their mechanisms of actions, and again, that's one of the reasons why some people do well with one versus the other or neither. The benefit out of MVP over DECA is the fact that it has a very short half-life in comparison to DECA. And this is due to the fact that it has an undecanate half-life, which is an extremely long half-life. You're talking like 14 days or more. And then phenylpropionate, which is going to be your NPP, is very similar to a propionate, which you're looking at 24, 48 hours or so. So it's a very, very short half-life. And to really make sure that that stays stable in your system, you're really wanting to do a shot every single day. Now that's one of the downsides to having very short half-lives is the fact to keep them as stable as you can, you do need to be administering it every day or every other day. MPP is extremely strong and will have much harder skewing effect on the lipid profile than something like a testosterone or potentially a primable. And so the question was around what dosing. He asked about a one to two ratio between testosterone to primable and, and then how much MPP would you add in there. And the real way that I personally do this is how much estrogen can you handle first off? So tolerable amount of estrogen, the more estrogen you have, the better it is for muscle building. So testosterone as that base is always the king. And then you add that primo in for controlling estrogen levels instead of an aromatizer inhibitor, which has so much proof backing that we should not be taking aromatizer inhibitors unless if you're someone literally with breast cancer. There's very, very niche use for it and it would be an extreme case and really like a one-off dose. So that's where Primo or Mastrone would come into the equation. Then when it comes to NPP, the question was around the dosing there. So where would I dose NPP or DECA? And realistically, if you're implementing NPP or DECA, it's really for the mechanism of action for joint support more so than anything else, adding fluid into the joint for relief of the joint. So when you're talking about effective dose, this is my personal experience with it, which other people may have other experience with this with it. I find even 50 milligrams to max 100 milligrams is absolutely plenty for getting the joint support that I need, especially when I was having the shoulder issues, which I still currently have today. I just choose to run my TRT rather than anything else. So can it be implemented? The answer is absolutely, it can be implemented. I would only implement it in effective dose and really use that testosterone base and that Primo or Masterone as the major piece to your muscle protein synthesis. These across the board, AAs have the same amount of muscle protein synthesis relatively across the board evenly. The whole key is to reduce down the side effects and the impact on your lab work to the best of your ability. So if you don't need it, I personally wouldn't implement it. Now another issue that arises with an NPP or a DECA is the increase of estrogen production, which should not be counteracted by an AI. And that again is where a Prima or Masterone may be able to help out here because NPP and DECA does not increase aromatization, but it will increase the production of estrogen from that base of testosterone. 